Most people would simply call Bob Weir the rhythm guitarist from the Grateful Dead, but he's so much more. We're gonna take a look at what any guitarist can learn from him. And then we're not gonna focus on copying Bob, but just learning his overall approach so you can apply it to your own playing. And I'm gonna leave out a ton of stuff, but at the same time, we're still gonna cover a lot and move real quick. So don't get overwhelmed, just remember that it's an overview of his sounds. So what about Bob? We're gonna use going down the road feeling bad as a kind of a template to start real simple and build ourselves up looking at the complexities of what he does. So I know this is not even a dead tune, but it's just a good example. It's just in the key of E, it's the same thing the whole time. It's just E, A, C sharp minor, and B. So we're gonna look at it just in isolation, not even play through the progression, kind of save some time here. So if we looked at open chords, starting real simple, we'd have E, A, C sharp minor, and B. And now Bob certainly plays open chords all the time all the time, but more commonly, he would use a thing called the CAGE system, which is just a way of thinking about shapes, if you don't know what that means. It's just an acronym for open chord shapes. So C, A, G, E, and D, and then the minor equivalents. So say we take this shape right here, A, if we played it like this, you imagine kind of like this, take that shape, move it up here, seventh fret here, so it's an E, that would be an E in the A shape, right? Here would be an A in the E shape. All right, so if say we did over here, E in this C shape, right, this is a tricky one, people often avoid it, but Bob uses this a lot. And then you just stayed in one position, E, A, C sharp minor in the A minor shape, and then B in the G shape. Now you can play all those chords right there. And now this is a tough one to get the whole, you know, shape but, oops, but you know, Bob would often just play pieces of it, and we'll look a little later about how he would play around this shape a lot, doing some kind of cool fills and things. But you can see how, you, you know, you start to, you know, do these different shapes, and it really opens it up, so that's more like a Bob approach. One of my favorite quotes from Bob is, I don't know if I discovered I had any talent. It was dogged persistence. I had to have the music. Now, that's a great reminder that when we listen to a lot of our favorite players, we think that Oh, they're just naturally that good and that's it. But no matter how much natural talent they have or don't, they worked hard and they just kind of kept at it. So if you're ever feeling frustrated with your own playing, just remind yourself, you just got to keep at it and keep trying to focus on improving and learning as much as you can and you will get there, you know? So let's look at another thing of breaking up chords. So I think Bob would do a lot, this thing called triad. So if we take that C shape right here, we just play this right here. That right there, that's a called a triad. And just like tri, meaning three, it's three note chord, and it's the building blocks of all chords. So if we play this right here, in our open E, these three right here, this is what they call a root position triad, because the root is on the bottom of E. You have E, G sharp, and B, right? Those are the notes that make up an E chord. Now, if we flip that around, it's called an inversion, then we have G sharp, B, and E. So that G sharp on the bottom, that makes it a first inversion. You're flipping it around. And if you do it again, a second inversion, you've got B, E, and G sharp. And then you can go back to the root position. So you get those three different versions of it. And that really opens things up. So you get, you can move around more easily, get more melodic. And uh, notice how the sound of each one is. You know, this one's very restful. It'd be a good one to end the song if you wanted to make it sound really resolved. This one kind of is pushing forward a little bit, and this one really, you know, pushes a lot. So they each have a different kind of energy to it, you know? And I used to think that, you know, you had to play chords as is. So if you saw an E, then you go like this. But you, you can, yeah, you can do anything like that. You can do it like this. I used to think that the root had to be in the bottom, but it doesn't, because, you know, like think about Phil. He would just be laying down the root all the time. That's all he did, just lay down the root. No, I'm just kidding, he was playing all over the place. He was a real unique bass player, but still, he'd be revolving around the root. Typically, you have that, right? So, if you're playing this by yourself, it may sound a little different, but in the band with a bass player, if you're hearing that E, you don't have to have the E in the bottom. It really opens things up, frees things up. It was a great moment when I realized that. Now, aside from this, a non-musical thing that we can really learn from Bob that I like is that he was super humble. He's a real team player, you know, he's not putting up all-star numbers every night, but he's pivotal to a team's success, you know, and he's exactly who I want on my team because he makes everybody else play a lot better and he glues it all 
together. So another great quote from Bob was, the same song on a different day was a different song. Now, another great way of changing that up and making it different every time you play it is altering the chords. So again, we don't have to play chords as is when we see it. So we're gonna do a thing I call a lightning round. So we're gonna move real fast through these ideas of how Bob could change up the chords. So first one is sliding into a chord from one fret below. So we'd often do that. All right, so slide around. Another thing he would do is throw in sixth between the chords. So he'd have. All right? Now, let's try something else on acoustic. Now let's listen to an example of how he played single notes between chords. All right, let's head back to the electric. Now one thing Bob would do a lot is doing these things I call Hendrix fills, uh, kind of between chords. And uh, it wasn't something Hendrix came up with, but it was something he did a lot of and kind of took it to another level, was very influential with it. And Bob uh, would do it as well. And now you could just take this spot right here and do the pentatonic, so the E major pentatonic scale, and just kind of notes from that, or on that shape right there. You can do three strings, two strings at a time, people call that double stops or whatever. And, uh, Sometimes just single notes, but then he knows other places like here, down the C shape, right? And that's it. Now Bob would often color his chords in different ways. So let's look at three different ways he would do it. He, if you have a major minor chord, he would often add notes on top and add a six or a seventh. So in this example, let's say on the B, it'd be very common to add a seventh there. But it's a B7. Right? It gives you a certain color. Maybe it's kind of like a red, it's kind of a sound, a color, a vibe. You know, you could throw on that six, things like that. But really mix it up, jazz it up. Now, one he uses a lot is playing sus chords. Either a sus two or a sus four. So if you take that E right here, if you just add this note right here, it gives you a real kind of cool, I think of like a cool blue sound or a sus two. So this note right here is a third. You either bring it up to a fourth and bring it down to a second. It gives you a real spacey sound. So another way Bob would color chords is kind of a gospel approach where he would play a different chord over a different root. So for example here, an E, he might play an A, right? So if I play the E here, you can kind of hear that sound. It actually gives you a little bit of sus sound. There, he might slide into it. He would do that stuff all the time. So again, remember, we can break outside the box and play different chords in different situations. You don't have to match everything up perfectly. And now that the storm is clearing, let's look at another thing that we can learn from Bob that's hard to put your finger on, is that no matter what you do, all the stuff we just looked at, it doesn't mean anything if you don't play it tastefully. He was so tasteful in everything he did. And that just takes time to develop your taste and just try things out, dive into it and realize, ah, maybe you don't like that, but you like this other thing and you keep working on that. So let's look at jamming. If you were kind of staying what they call a modal situation, just jamming over one chord, there is so many things we can do here, but let's just focus in on one thing, a thing called quartal harmony, which is like this. It's really spaced out sound. Bob once said, what I like about music is when time goes away. This is a great kind of chord to kind of just give it that timeless feeling. Now, how did Bob come up with this? Well, he didn't. Now, Bob learns a lot from other instruments, and in particular, piano, and in particular, a jazz pianist called McCoy Tyner, and he played in John Coltrane's band from about 60 to 65, and pretty much just as influential as Coltrane was to saxophone, he was to piano, and I had already studied his approach quite a bit because I went to school for jazz, so it's standard stuff, and we're gonna look at just some things that Bob took away from there, and that is a difference of playing closed chords versus open chords, and there's different ways he would get this kind of open sound, but one is a thing called quartal harmony, and uh, it ends up giving you these sus sounds, and if that's confusing to you and stuff, don't worry about it, just listen to how it sounds, right? So it's kind of more normal, kind of this spacey open sound, right? So that sound is really, really out there. Out there. So 
So we've been looking at a lot of different ways of playing chords, and I haven't mentioned yet that these are called different voicings, and that just comes from classical times with choral music, where you have a conductor specifically telling people to say, you sing this, you sing that, and so on, and then be like, oh wait, actually, can you sing that instead, and this and that? So you're literally changing up the voices that are singing what notes. So with guitar, you know, you'd be like, okay, this is one voicing of an E, this is a different voicing, it's the same notes, but just rearranged in a different way. Now, Bob would also take this further with not only being specific about the voicings he played, but the voice leading, and that is thinking even further about how chords link up. So he might take a chord like this, and then he'd think, okay, well, now I'm gonna play the A like this, so that the bottom note um, is the same note. That's a, you know, kind of gluing it together. So your voice leading, maybe the C sharp minor then goes into B like this, you know, got this movement in the bottom going up. Maybe he plays the B like this, which is uh, playing that G shape, but with the G right there. They mentioned that before, that's a, that's a bob shape he would do a lot. Like either this or this. Another one that I didn't mention is he does plays his major chords like this. Uh, let's say he did it for E. Um, it's not uniquely him, but not that many people do this, So and he would do it a lot, so it's a little bit of a you know his own thing. So you play the root, the third, the root, and the third. You do it often in slower tunes, something like, you know, ramble on rows and, and things like that. But, you know, none of this stuff means anything with the voice leading or any of that stuff. If you try to force it, you know, you got to do it, again, tastefully. I remember a lot of things. I used to learn some jazz tricks with these chords and this and that, and then I'd try to do it. And I'd be like, oh, that kind of worked. And then some of the times, like, it just didn't work. So you have to really take your time and get really familiar with the way it sounds and feels in your hand and make it a part of you. And then you can kind of integrate it and make it more musical. And now, how would Bob make any of the things he played sound so natural? It's through listening. So you get ideas and inspiration from the other players, especially while jamming and taking it out and having it be a little more free. It's not about just doing any of these musical tricks. It's about listening to what everybody else is doing and kind of following them and other times kind of leading them, but just listening so that you're part of a whole team. Now, this stuff also means nothing if we don't develop what we play. So none of this means anything. I would say the most important thing any guitarist can get from Bob's approach is how he develops his playing so much, especially during the jams. You know, so he doesn't just play things as is and repetitively, he develops it and he gets ideas from listening. He knows where to go from listening to the others in the band. Now you don't need to know all these musical skills to be able to develop. You just need to try it. Start with something simple and just focus on having some forward momentum. And it will change your playing so much and change the playing of other people around you you play with. So we focused a lot on Bob's approach to playing chords, but remember that there's much more who's playing, things like rhythm and tone and so much more that we can learn from and apply to our own playing. But make sure that you're more mindful of how you play your chords. And remember, you don't have to get locked into any one way. But above all, focus on developing your playing. Just take something real simple and try to make it go on a journey to another place. And if you want to know more about Bob's approach from all these things, diving deeper, check out this playlist right here, Bob's Chords. I got a whole bunch of videos diving deep into each tune where we go into the same stuff here plus a whole lot more so check it out find a tune that you like watch it grab your guitar and apply this stuff and make it your own